The pain of an individual who has lost a parent or child can only be described as immeasurable. But what happens when an entire family simply ups and vanishes one day? With only a few loved ones left behind to pick up the pieces, it becomes a race against the clock to find answers before there is no one left to look for them. In today's episode, we aim to shed light on such mysteries as we examine three cases of families who vanished into thin air. The Bernans Garcia Family The Bernans Garcia family were last seen in Los Angeles, California on March 15, 1982. The family consisted of 41-year-old Carmen Maria Bernans Garcia, her husband, 28-year-old Diego Garcia, and Carmen's daughter, 8-year-old Barbara Aurora Bernans. The trio lived together on Division Street in the Glassell Park area, and the property was a split residence, with Carmen's mother living upstairs. On the morning of March 15th, Carmen's mother came downstairs to find her daughter crying. However, at the time, she didn't think to ask what was wrong. At around 12 p.m., Carmen, Barbara, and Diego climbed into their vehicle, a brown 1977 Toyota Corolla, and drove away from the residence. Carmen's mother never saw them again, and it's unclear where they were heading or if they shared that information. Notably, the family took nothing with them, leaving behind their clothes and personal possessions, and even the family dog. Carmen's mother described their home as looking clean and untouched. On April 25th, over a month after the family went missing, their Toyota was discovered 500 feet down a gorge in the San Gabriel Mountains, off Route 2 near Big Pines, California. It was empty and appeared to be stuck in a snowbank, buried in five feet of snow with the roof crushed inwards. Still, there were no signs of foul play or even injury, and there was no blood inside the vehicle or anything that would indicate the family had come to harm. The road off which the Toyota had been recovered had been closed since March 16th, just one day after the family had left their LA home. Investigators theorized that the car was either pushed down the mountain by someone trying to hide it, or had accidentally been knocked off the side of the road by a snowplow whose driver didn't notice it. Unfortunately, there were very few developments in the case after the family's vehicle was found. There were, however, numerous rumors floating around town. It was alleged that Carmen, who had recently converted to Mormonism, was involved with a religious cult that carried out candle-lit live chicken sacrifices. Unsurprisingly, this notion has never been substantiated. Another suggestion was that Diego had become involved in a violent drug or gambling scheme, and that the family were attempting to flee LA to avoid danger, or possibly even death. This rumor claimed that the trio were going to start a new life in the Little Havana neighborhood of Miami, Florida. However, this theory has never been proven either. There were reported sightings of Carmen in the months after her disappearance, but no eyewitnesses ever came forward claiming to have seen her husband or daughter. The sightings of Carmen herself have never been substantiated. Carmen had been married once before she tied the knot with Diego, this other man is the biological father of Barbara. However, there is no indication that he was ever considered a person of interest or suspect in the case. The Bernans Garcia family were last seen in LA, California on March 15, 1982, when they drove away from their home in their brown 1977 Toyota Corolla. The car was found abandoned over a month later in the San Gabriel Mountains, off Route 2 near Big Pines, California. Carmen Bernans Garcia was 41 when she vanished. She is described as a white woman with black hair and dark eyes. She is 5 foot 6 and weighed around 210 pounds at the time of her disappearance. Her ears are pierced. 
If she is still alive, she will be 82. Diego Garcia was 28 when he vanished. He is described as a Hispanic male with black hair and brown eyes. He is five foot four and weighed around 150 pounds at the time of his disappearance. He may have a mustache. Diego was born in Cuba, and if he is still alive, will be 69 years old. Barbara Aurora Burns was just eight when she disappeared alongside her mother and stepfather. She is described as a biracial woman, being half white and half Hispanic, with black hair and brown eyes. She was five foot and weighed 100 pounds when she went missing. She may use the surname Garcia, and if she is still alive, will be 49 years old. If you have any information about the disappearance of the Burnans Garcia family, you can call the Los Angeles Police Department at 213-996-1800. The Stewart Family 32-year-old Mary Elizabeth Stewart was last seen in Honeydew, California on December 10, 1977. At around 10 a.m. that morning, she left her residence with her two young children in tow, planning to do some errands. Mary intended to visit the grocery store, a television repair shop in either Eureka or Fairfield, and the opticians, and had $200 on her person to cover the expenses. She and her children, one-year-old Fanny Fawn Stewart and two-year-old Jesse Flo Stewart, were meant to return home afterwards, but they never did. Mary, Fanny, and Jesse have never been seen since. Despite Mary being married at the time to Byron McGray Stewart, the children's father, the trio were not reported missing until three days had passed. The missing persons report was filed by a friend of Mary's. Police officers subsequently spoke with opticians and television repair shops, but there was no record of Mary Stewart's supposed visits. Over a month later, on January 19, 1978, Mary's car, a red Opal station wagon with the license plate number 456AII, was located on an old logging road a few miles from home. The road was reportedly not part of her usual route, but would eventually lead her back to her residence. Notably, the car's gas line was broken, and there were groceries and laundry in the back, along with a television set. Even stranger still was the fact that the TV had been repaired, despite the fact that nobody had a record of Mary as a customer at their store. Byron Stewart soon became the main suspect in the case, and remains so even to this day. He reportedly had a bad temper and violent history, but not enough evidence was found which could connect him to the crime, and the bodies of his wife and children are still missing. After their disappearance, Stewart began exhibiting odd behaviors, claiming that his wife and children had been abducted by aliens. He became an alcoholic and drug abuser, and was diagnosed with AIDS in 1991. He died five years later at the age of 48. After Mary, Jesse, and Fanny disappeared, Stewart never remarried or had further children. In 2009, the case of the missing Stewart family was reopened, but no trace of them beyond their car has ever been found. 32-year-old Mary Elizabeth Stewart was last seen in Honeydew, California at around 10 a.m. on the morning of December 10th, 1977, with her two daughters, one-year-old Fanny Stewart and two-year-old Jessie Flo Stewart. Mary is described as a white woman with brown hair and blue eyes. She is five foot five and weighed around 135 pounds at the time of her disappearance. She may use the name Dankert, and when she went missing, she was driving a red Opal station wagon with the license plate number 456AII, which was recovered a month after her disappearance. If Mary is still alive, she will be 78. Both of Mary's daughters are described as being white, with hazel eyes. Fanny has red hair and was two foot four, weighing 20 pounds when she went missing. Jessie has blonde hair and was two foot eight, wearing 26 pounds when she vanished. Both children will be in their late 40s if they are still alive. If you have any information about the disappearance of the Stewart family, you can contact the Humboldt County Sheriff's Department at 707-445-7439. The Guthrie Family 
29-year-old Leslie Ann Guthrie vanished from Katona, New York, on February 5, 1977, alongside her two children, three-year-old Timothy and six-year-old Julie. The trio were last seen at around 1.30 p.m., when Leslie picked up the children from the home of their father, Leslie's estranged husband, who was living on Grandview Avenue at the time. Once her children were secured in the back seat of the vehicle, Leslie drove off. She and her children have never been seen again, and their vehicle has never been recovered. Timothy Sr., Leslie's estranged husband, was quickly ruled out as being a suspect in the case. Although the couple were separated, with Leslie living with her mother in White Plains, New York, they had an amicable relationship and were described as still being friends. By all accounts, there was no residual bitterness or anger, and there were no reports of Timothy Sr. having a temper or violent streak. The couple had been high school sweethearts, and after serving in Vietnam, Timothy Sr. took a job as a traveling salesman, frequently leaving Leslie alone with two young children. This may have contributed to their subsequent separation, which, according to Timothy Sr., had been spearheaded by Leslie. Leslie was due to bring the children back to Timothy Sr. later on the day of their disappearance, but even when she didn't show up, Timothy Sr. was not phased. It wasn't unusual for the mother of two to sometimes keep the children overnight. It wasn't until the following evening, at 6 o'clock, that he reported the family as missing. He subsequently cooperated fully with investigators, hired a PI to aid in the search, and spent a sizable amount of time and money looking for his missing children and their mother. Still, his attempts at finding a happy ending for the family were fruitless. According to reports, there were no indications that Leslie left of her own volition, and it was not believed she was unhappy with her life. She left behind her clothing and personal belongings and didn't withdraw any substantial amounts of money from her bank accounts before she vanished. However, a more recent documentary reveals that, according to Timothy Sr., Leslie had changed considerably in the months leading up to her disappearance. He described her as being obviously depressed and saying things that didn't make sense. More bizarrely still, she was purchasing and reading books pertaining to the occult, with Timothy Sr. indicating that he once heard her suggest someone was trying to communicate through the static in the television. Still, Leslie never expressed any desire to harm herself or her children. According to this same documentary, Leslie was dating a new man in 1976. She brought him to a New Year's Eve party at the time, Little is known about this man, or if he had any connection to the disappearance, however. In January of 1977, Leslie's doctor noticed that she seemed to be suffering a lot of highs and lows, and even recommended that she sign herself into a mental health clinic, but Leslie declined. Reportedly, a letter was found from Leslie addressed to her mother inside a jewelry box at some point after the disappearance. In it, Leslie apologized for what she had to do. However, no specifics were ever given in the letter, and it is unclear if Leslie meant she was running away, or worse, taking her own life and those of her children. Police later revealed that several phone calls were made to Leslie's mother's home after she went missing, but that the caller would hang up when her mother answered. They have noted that this occurs most commonly with runaways, but the caller has never been identified. In 1984, police were notified of a woman in Wyoming who had changed her appearance using hair dye and contact lenses and had two children with her. It was reported that she was hiding from someone and she refused to discuss her past. However, the woman and the children were ruled out as being Leslie, Timothy Jr. and Julie. All three family members are still missing to this day and progress in their case has been virtually non-existent since the mid 1980s. In 2006, a relative handed the police a suitcase which once belonged to Leslie. The case contained three toothbrushes, believed to have been used by Leslie and her children. DNA was extracted from the brushes and entered into a database, but there have been no hits so far. The circumstances of the disappearances are unclear, and the case is still unsolved. In 1994, Leslie's mother died. Her estranged husband, Timothy Sr., eventually left the state of New York. As Leslie's vehicle has never been recovered, the prevailing theory online is that she accidentally drove into one of the numerous bodies of water scattered around the area. 
Online sleuths have suggested that the icy weather, combined with the narrow, twisting roads local to the area, caused Leslie to lose control of the car. If this is true, we may never know what became of the Guthries, as the car could be deeply submerged and difficult to find. 29-year-old Leslie Ann Guthrie and her two children, 3-year-old Timothy Jr. and 6-year-old Julie, were last seen in Katona, New York on the afternoon of February 5, 1977. They were driving away from Timothy Sr.'s home on Grandview Avenue. Leslie's vehicle was a white 1974 300 series Ford Maverick with a green roof and a New York license plate number 636 WNA. The car has never been recovered. Leslie is described as a white woman with brown hair and brown eyes. She is between 5 foot 4 and 5 foot 7 and weighed 120 pounds at the time of her disappearance. When she was last seen, she was wearing an old ski jacket, jeans, and boots, two sizes too small, which she had borrowed. Her maiden name is Locke. If Leslie is still alive, she will be 75 years old. Julie Ann Guthrie is described as a white woman with brown hair and blue eyes. When she vanished, she was four foot tall and weighed 55 pounds. She has strawberry birthmarks on her chin and back. If she is still alive, she will be 52 years old. Meanwhile, Timothy Patrick Guthrie Jr. is described as a white male with brown hair and blue eyes. He was three foot three and weighed 30 pounds at the time of his disappearance. If he is still alive, he will be 49 years old. If you have any information about the disappearance of the Guthrie family, you can contact the Bedford Town PD at 914-241-3111. Alternatively, you can call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-843-5678. And there you have the facts. Please leave a comment down below with your own theories and speculations, and remember to like this video and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you for watching. Stay alert, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.